The FMS P-40 Warhawk is a gorgeous warbird. Just look at it. How can you not love it? The problem with the Warhawk is that it's cursed. Every time I fly it, the weather forecast goes from calm winds to this crap. But I gotta hand it to the Warhawk, it actually flies pretty well in blustery wind. The P-40 is one of those planes that's relatively stable because of its plan form and the nose forward battery location which makes a gyro almost redundant. It helps, but it doesn't do much for it. Aside from being tossed around like a Kleenex in a snot party, it was almost predictable to land, and that's high praise coming from me. It's still a model aircraft though, and these winds beat the crap out of it, which makes landing challenging. But if you absolutely do need to torture yourself by flying in turbulent wind, the P-40 is a pretty solid choice for that. The P-40 uses EC5 connectors like it's expecting a 6-cell pack, but it's rated for 4 cells. So we recommend the SMC 2800 4 cell pack shoved to the very front strap, or an SMC 3600 centered between both straps. Toss the tray into the plane and you're all set. If you use SMC batteries like we're recommending, don't charge them to 4.3 volts per cell. Charge them to 4.2 volts. The ESC will think it's a 5 cell pack otherwise and you may miss the 5 beeps while setting it up. This means low voltage cutoff kicks in at 16 volts instead of at 13 volts and you'll end up dead sticking like we did here. But thankfully the Warhawk is actually relatively forgiving and it does allow you just enough thrust to land. It's almost impossible to fly it tail heavy but if you do somehow manage it, you might want to consider a pitch gyro. The nose heavier an aircraft is, the less useful a pitch gyro becomes, and after a certain point, the stability provided by the center of gravity requires a ton of gains on the gyro to be effective. The plan form influences this to an extent, too, as the P-40 had almost no measurable difference when flying with or without a gyro, it felt basically the same. If you fly a gyro on the P-40, we recommend tuning it mostly for roll because it seems to make no real difference otherwise. Takeoff is relatively easy, just like most warbirds. Lots of P-factor will yaw the Warhawk to the left, so you'll want to use a consistent amount of right rudder to keep it tracking straight. I covered this technique in my tutorial on how to handle warbird takeoffs and landings, so you'll want to click on the card in the top right if you need more info on this. Proper technique for tail draggers becomes even more important if you have a crosswind, which will necessitate using both aileron into the wind and right rudder to keep it tracking and keeping the upwind wing from lifting off too early. I forgot to do this and it nearly led to a crash. Learn from my mistakes and keep this in mind. It's even more important with these narrow wheels. Landing the Warhawk isn't too difficult if the wind is calm. The basics of landing a plane apply here. Pick a point on the runway, set your approach angle, drop flaps and gear, use throttle as needed to maintain a steady sink rate. As you get closer to the ground, add elevator input to gently drop on the mains and steer with the rudder while the tail settles on the ground and taxi back. Where it gets really challenging is trying to keep it confined to a 17 foot wide strip of unmaintained pavement. Because the Warhawk's wheelbase is narrow, a less than perfect landing can mean a wing scrape or a runway excursion. I'll take it. I don't care. <laughs> or multiple runway excursions. Didn't scrape up. There's better planes to fly off of this pavement than this one, but where's the fun in not trying to challenge yourself? I do have a gyro running for landing, and it's helping smooth out the wing rocking a bit, but otherwise it does almost nothing for this plane, and it simply can't deal with massive wing drops caused by wind shear. So if you don't feel it when you're planning to land, throttle up and go around. Don't try to force a bad approach into a good landing. It's exceedingly rare that you'll pull it off. The Warhawk is capable of forward slips. The rudder is effective, but not so effective that it makes it flip upside down when all you're trying to do is drop some airspeed and get it into a tight spot. This is not something that I see many RC pilots practicing, so if you want to learn more about how to forward slip, check out my Warbird landing tutorial, which you can click on at the top right of your screen. 
Forward slips are super useful for dropping altitude quickly without gaining very much airspeed if you don't want to go around, or if your flying field is surrounded by obstacles. The Warhawk is a great plane to fly if you want to fly in lazy circles or perform light acro. But it's also capable of vertical knife edge spins, cartwheels, and other flip-flops that I can't even begin to describe. All you need are 150% rates and a willingness to throw the sticks into the corners to see what happens. I'm sure someone is seething watching me perform these maneuvers with a warbird, so here's some smoother big box style acro for you just to show you that it can be done. Or if you prefer really slow flybys with the flaps dropped, it'll do that no problem too. It's so stable as a platform that it even resists accelerated stalls, the kind of stall that you get at higher speeds than the nominal stall speed. Accelerated stalls are primarily caused by elevator yanking, but once you get it too slow, it'll start to drop a wing and spiral into that classic Warbird stall of death. Maneuvering at high speeds isn't much of a problem with the Warhawk, it's lower speed maneuvering that'll get you. Keep that thrust up and banked turns and you'll be fine. The P-40 is a lot of fun to fly, and it's really forgiving for a Warbird. I wouldn't call this your first choice if you're new to Warbirds, but it could easily be your second one. Handling overall is pretty docile in stock configuration, but you can max out the rates to wake it up. Be careful if you're maneuvering at low airspeeds, because it will stall into a spiral, like most Warbirds will. If you fly it and keep that airspeed up, you've got nothing to worry about. Our updated review score six months later is 9.5 out of 10, a full point up from 8.5. The only real drawback to it is that it doesn't play nicely with high voltage batteries. The servos are high quality metal geared units and the control surfaces provide precise and deliberate maneuvering and it can be thrown around like a madman or flown like a precision aerobat. There's not much to complain about here. Consider picking up one for yourself from fmshobby.com via the link in the description and use the code referral to bros RC for 10% off your first order of $100 or more, or use the code 2BROSRC for $10 off any order of $100 at any time. Thanks for watching and hop into our Discord server to let us know what you think, or drop us a comment down below. See you next time!